Okay, hi guys, welcome to our episode two of Mind Your Business. Um, so today we have two other guests, um, two other business people, self-employed, and they're going to introduce themselves and what they do in their business. So I'll start with Lee, and then we go on to Alec. Okay, so my name is Lee. I'm a freelance graphic designer, illustrator, and that's my business. Um, in the meantime, I'm usually at school teaching. Okay. And Alec? Me, well, I'm a um, self-employed personal trainer, so I work basically mainly in gyms, um, trying to get people fit. Um, I'm also involved in taking classes there and like inductions and stuff like that, getting people in, inducted into the gym and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's about mainly freelance personal training is what I do. Okay, so you're both kind of like freelancers. Yeah. Um, so the first question really is, why did you decide to um, venture into self-employment or being a freelancer? And I'll start with Lee again. Okay, so I kind of fell into it. I've always had graphics and people ask me, oh, can you do this? Can you do that? So when it came time for me to do it, um, I kind of had to. Um, I didn't really consider myself a business person because mm -hmm. like working out how to price things and all sorts like that, you're like, oh, what do I do? How do I work it out? Mm. As you try, you kind of learn it. And because I had the interest in wanting to do it and I knew I could do it, it was worth doing it. So every time I'd be like to God, yeah, I need to do this. And even if I did make mistakes, I still would learn from the mistakes and say, yeah, I didn't like how that hand, uh, how I handled that one, but I want to see how I can do it better next time. Oh, great. So you kind of fell into being a graphic designer. Yeah, because I did graphics anyway. And people yeah. were up. So. Great. So Alec, why did you decide to venture into self-employment or freelancing? Um, Self-employment, um, it was, since since becoming a dad, really, it's been really difficult to hold down a, a job and be flexible. So um, that when, when I when I was actually working in school at the time, then I, I actually decided to go ahead and qualify as a personal trainer. I'd been training people way back in the day before, but not qualified. So I qualified to become a personal trainer. I was like, what am I going to do with this qualification? Mm -hmm. And then um, it's just getting increasingly more difficult to to balance kids and work and stuff like that in a rigid job so i decided to go into personal training because then i can like you know work around uh, my kids uh, having to take them to school um then going to back to work to try to make make a living and having to go and pick them up because my wife's in full-time employment so it's difficult for us to both be in full-time employment so yeah. i kind of tried to take the more flexible route and just being able to be there for the kids and working and be there for the kids again in the evenings and stuff like that so that's kind of yeah, how I've self-employment. Okay, so more of um, flexibility and being able yeah. to like um, plan your life around your exactly. obviously job. Yeah. 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 Okay, so are there any since since becoming a freelancer or um, self-employed? How are there any personal sacrifices you've had to make um, when since you've started? So in terms of family life or just in terms of um, social life, are there any personal sacrifices you've had to make, Lee? Okay, so because um, mine is freelance, I don't go into anywhere to do it. I just do it from home because I've got the program mm -hmm. on it myself. And I saw it as a good thing as like a side hustle. I think everybody should have a side hustle where you can get like some income coming in from somewhere else. But when you're doing that, you're stretched because I have one job, which I put a lot of energy into. And then sometimes people are messaging me while I'm at that job and then they're like oh yeah can you sort this out and with graphics you know that people are always going to want the little finer changes so um, the thing is, is that when when I got married uh, even before I got married to be fair I remember I was on holiday and I didn't work on holiday and then my wife she worked my wife at the time she was like oh why are you working on that for like <laughs> on holiday but for me it was just like it, it's still a job that I, w I was willing to do and it wasn't going to take too long yeah. so it's about prioritizing time and it's, it's getting the balance because if you want to be successful at anything, you're going to have to put in time and you're going to have to be up late or you're going to have to be up early or both. And you're mm. going to have to kind of shrug off some leisure in order to make your empire bigger. But you yeah. have to balance it to see what, what's really important to you and what's the balance that you need. I can't tell you that. For me, I think I've got a good flow. For other people, they might want the empire to be even bigger. So then they're going to yeah some of the time with like visiting people or things like that yeah definitely I, I think from that what we get is obviously time time I think for a lot of business people is 
a big sacrifice they have to make um, to be able to become successful or um, have a really good business. So Alec, what, are, what is one personal sacrifice you've had to make? Um, sacrifices, I would say the biggest sacrifice was the security of having a, a regular paycheck. Um, <laughs> that was that was that was the most challenging in the beginning um, as I was starting out, you know, you, you, you know, at a certain time of the month, you're going to get a certain amount of money. Um, mm -hmm. And having to kind of like, losing that was like, it was quite a big, um, big deal in the beginning until I became more established. Mm -hmm. But as you became, as you become more established, obviously you were able to pay the bills and like keep your life at a certain quality. Um, so I would say just the security of having a, a full-time job, like a nine to five or, or a typical yeah. nine to five or whatever you, that was a big sacrifice. Um, other than that, um, yeah, probably a bit of social life as well, because mm -hmm. being self-employed, obviously you have to grind, as Lee's saying, you have to grind a bit early in the morning or a bit later at night. So the social life in terms of going out in the evening with your friends and stuff like that became um, less and less because a lot of time I had to be in the gym quite early for clients. Um, yeah. When I worked in the city, I was in the gym sometime from five in the morning and um, five and six in the morning training people. So yeah, that was a sacrifice as well. Yeah, just the social social aspect of meeting friends and going out and stuff like that. Yeah. So practically for both this question's for like both of you as well. Practically, I know Lee said um you need to find a balance, but how for someone who may be starting a business and worried about the fact that um they're gonna kind of like ignore their wife or like <laughs> Um, not uh, spend enough time with their friends or whatever. How do you practically um, manage that or balance that? Uh, you have to kind of ask God to count the cost. So look at the whole scan of everything that's incorporated into it and work out what's needed and what's not really needed. So I remember at one time I had a website and I put up the website, I put a lot of effort into putting the website and then like it, it didn't really pay off I learned skills, but I didn't really want those skills. So I said to God, I don't think it's really necessary me doing this and try to up update the website regularly. And I looked at other people's flows. They had old websites that like every work was old in it. And it's like, this flow don't really seem to work. But Instagram is something where people can um, update easier. And I even don't even use that for the business because for myself, I wanted to get work as a side hustle, but I didn't want it to be the main thing unless mm -hmm. it turned out into its main thing. I kind of let it do what it does. But um, in that, because I don't advertise, I get good, good jobs, like I get good amount of jobs, but I don't get too many where I feel like I feel obliged. I know I'm the type of person that I would feel obliged. That like if someone says to me they want this job and I got loads of jobs and then I got my work at a school as well, I'm going to try to do all of that and be mash up. Mm -hmm. so I said, if I get rid of the website, I get rid of like trying to advertise too hard because I'm happy with the level that I got. Let me work that way yeah okay so practically being able to like um decide what is a priority and what's not a priority what to drop and kind of like what to continue on as well um yeah. alec do you have any like advice in terms of how do you practically manage um that whole thing of like balancing um yeah it's, it was i mean it's difficult um to, to kind of find a balance especially when you're married and you've got kids and stuff like that but um in the beginning, it was very difficult. Obviously, being established, trying to get established again, you know, you're taking whatever you can get because you want to mm -hmm. try to build uh, yourself, establish yourself. But as you become more established, you kind of like, um, I started to kind of scale back and say, you know what, I'm not going to work every evening. I'm going to work maybe two to three evenings a week and then be mm -hmm. there for the kids and be there for the wife in the evenings and stuff like that. So I would end up um, trying to push my my kind of day earlier into the morning so i'll be i'll be available in the evenings for for family time um so yeah it's it's kind of it kind of it kind of again it kind of, and it kind of fitting with who i am as well because i'm a kind of i'm more of a morning person anyway so the morning as well is were more right. I, I was more productive <laughs> i'm more productive in the morning so yeah I, I i you know what i was i'll do that in the morning and then i'll be there for the family in the evening so mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult to give spot on advice for individuals. It really depends on your individual lifestyle Second, and what you really, yeah. um, and your makeup of your your family and kind of stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but that's how I kind of kind of figure it out. And, so I'm hearing I'm there's more like schedule. It's something I'm still figuring out. It's, it's something that you kind of have to 
um, could continue to shuffle day by day almost. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah. Yeah. I think definitely it's about scheduling. What I got from that is just schedule, knowing yourself. Like, as you said, you're a morning person. So when do you work well? And then when, what what's a good time to like go out with family or friends or yeah. um, spend time with them? So definitely scheduling. Um, I have a question about faith. So going into business, I, I feel like going into business is like taking a leap of faith or being mm. self-employed. Um, because obviously you have a lot of insur- um, things that you, you're not sure about, like your income, like you said, um, your time. Um, so was going into business like a leap of faith for you guys? Or was it a thing where you're saying, okay, I know I want to do this and I have all the confidence. So, or what is it like a big leap of faith? You know, firstly, he wants to start. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Alec, you can go. <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, definitely, it was a massive leap of faith. Uh, again, just having that security of a of a full time job was, you know, something that a lot of people, I wouldn't say take for granted, but you you kind of like, you know, you know, you got money coming in on a regular. So yeah, mm-hmm. and you know, having a family, you you have to be obviously pay the bills and make sure they're fed and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it definitely was a big leap of faith um, to just jump out. And the thing is, with me, I didn't even. I can't, I'm kind of crazy when it comes to those kind of things. So I didn't even have any kind of savings. I just left my job, gave my mom's notice. I wish I could do that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave my mom's notice and said, listen, oh, I'm done. Wow. I can't do this anymore. Um, I got to work. I got to try and work something out for myself. And I just did it and I prayed about it. And I just, I just jumped. Honestly, it was a big jump. And um, yeah, God caught me, man. I, I can't even lie. I mean, in the beginning, the first month or two were, were rough, but mm. it, it started to pick up quite quickly, and then it was quite, and it became really quite comfortable to be quite to be quite honest with you. But yeah, definitely a jump, definitely leap of faith. Yeah, and Lee, what, what do you think? Um, so I, I wouldn't say mine was um, a, a leap of faith or anything like that, but I think it's more of a calling, in the sense mm. of something that I couldn't really get away from, and then mm, things started yeah. to work out in a in a good way. So. I was in a, like jobs in retail and I was like always drawing and them jobs. And people are like, oh yeah, you should do more, you should do more. And a few bits and pieces, but mm. never enough. And then um, like my mom must have said, oh, like, would you teach it or something like that? And I'm like, yeah. And then it's like, since from then, things just mm. kept coming together where I had opportunity to teach it. So I used to work in a pro and I was teaching maths in a pro, but then I started teaching graphics there. I started, um, so it just felt like sneezing. Um, I started teaching graphics there. I started teaching um, other, like the Adobe Suite, I think like that. And then from there, I could just go in and teach it in other places. And then that widened my horizon and being able to um, do both my schoolwork and my job of freelancing. So they went both hand in hand. And most of the jobs that I get, like, I don't advertise, but I get the jobs, which I like. Uh, so I, I say that's good. And at times when I'm busy, so like when I'm planning a wedding, no jobs came in, you know. I was like, <laughs> bro, no. The, well, the funny thing is, I think before, just before, I knew that it was gonna get really hectic with the planning. I was like, ah, oh, these jobs, like they're kind of busy. I hope that when I have to do the big planning for the wedding, mm-hmm. I don't know how I'm gonna manage it. Mm. And then the big planning came, no jobs. But I was fine. <laughs> yeah. And then I was thinking, all right, so I'm married now. On a honeymoon, I think I was thinking, I was like, yeah, God, are these jobs gonna come back or is it gonna stay still? Because I haven't done anything. <laughs> And then I think jobs came back as well. So it, it's a calling in that way. Mm. Definitely. But Definitely. What, I think that... Uh, go on, go on. No, I was just going to say what, what Alec was saying, though, because I still mm-hmm. do it freelance. And I still do it, like, hedging my bets where I've got another job as well. But sometimes mm. I think, oh, good, have I not got enough faith? Should I jump out and actually do the whole... <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> a bit half-hearted. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a person, like, I have to kind of think about things too much before I do it. Yeah. So I'm Mm -hmm. thinking like, all right, so I know I can do this. I know this side of it, but I know that side I'm terrible at. So that's reasons Mm. I wouldn't do it. So it would be nice if I could just drop like Alex did and then God catch you and you see, oh, I flop, but I learn skills in the flop. (laughs) Yeah, 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 I think definitely in business, that's how, that's a lot of times it's like a leap of faith or even just in like your calling or your like recognizing your purpose is to just learn, learning how to like let go and not being so caught up with like all the fine details. Cause, Cause I feel like God always finds a way to like work it all out anyway. Yeah. Like we might not see the bigger thing. We see the little things and God's like, there's so much more like at the end for you. Mm-hmm. Exactly like what Alex said about the, the leap. 
<laughs> so I think, yeah, it's definitely a good point. Um, so staying on that um, same topic of faith, I was going to ask if your spiritual life has been changed by taking that leap of faith, Alec, um, has it been enhanced or by being a freelancer or um, a self, self-employed person and struggling to manage your time, has your spiritual life sh- suffered as a result? So which one? Oh, oof. yeah. It's been enhanced in that, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm much more, I'm a, lo- I'm a lot more prayerful than I was. Um, mm. Because because of the leap of faith, you know, you re- you have to re- really rely on God. I mean, um, because at the end of the day, clients can up and leave and leave you and say, you know what? And I've had it happen. Clients have said, mm. you know what? I can't continue this anymore for whatever reason, finance, whatever, not, whatever, not they yeah. can't afford it anymore. Whatever, not that's fine. Um, but it's 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 definitely mm. brought me closer that I have to always rely on Him because. And it's funny that even though clients leave you, they're, they're all they're quickly replaced as well. So mm-hmm. it's definitely um, no difference. definitely brought me closer to God. You know, I have to just you know what I'm holding on to you because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Really and truly, yeah. Um, that, that's that's yeah. So it definitely has enhanced my prayer life in that way. You know, like I'm just I'm forever clinging, clinging to Him. Yeah, definitely. Um, what about you, Lee? Um, do you think your prayer life, like, you, I know you said that you kind of been, you fell kind of into the whole freelancing thing, um, but has your spiritual life been enhanced because of just listening and, and um, kind of like adhering to God's calling or has it suffered in terms of like just juggling so much things like your teaching and this freelancing? Um, I don't know. I- I don't think it suffered in the sense of like my time is more focused on the business Mm -hmm. but I think like just aspirations and things that you want to do with it that kind of is challenged with it so for myself when I first started out like I, um, I, I was always into drawing and graphics and stuff like that so when I was at uh college I was studying to be an animator But then I said, no, I don't want to be in Hollywood. I don't want to be all of that because that's when I had my conversion experience and everything like that, like one of them extreme ones. I was like, yeah, I don't don't want to be in them them, um, areas. So I kind of stopped watching all films, all the cartoons that I loved and all sorts. I just stopped all of that stuff. And then I was like, yeah, God, I want to do this stuff for you. I want to get your message out and do big things for you. So I'd have mentors or people that I knew that was older, they give me jobs and then people that wanted me to do things, I was like, yeah, I, I don't think I could do that. I don't feel comfortable doing that. So that was a long curve. And then when I kept having situations like that, I got a bit discouraged. So I'm like, God, do you really want me to do this? But then when I'm in the lane where I felt that it was more purposeful and people are coming to me with jobs that I feel that I can do, I'm like, oh, well, God, yeah, there is part that I could do. And then mm-hmm. in church as well, we started an animation um, on creation so we spent loads like we spent months building that nights meetings and all sorts mm. and this mm. is where i say that you get the challenge so we did all of that and then the product like it hasn't been used it hasn't cut like it hasn't been completed yeah so, like, but do you not want this to be done so with things like that sometimes you can mm. i can be casual in one sense because i'm like yeah god if this if this goes well it goes well if it don't it don't Mm-hmm. But then the other sides, I could be like, yeah, I want this to go really well, good. And then when it doesn't, you're disappointed and you're like, oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it challenges my faith in that way, which is a bit different. Mm-hmm. I think that's a, that's a really good point. It's like when, when things um, don't go well in sense of business, because business is, is, is risky and obviously in things general, yeah. aren't, aren't stable in general. And definitely i think feel like when things are well and we're succeeding we're like oh thank you god this is my calling this is my purpose you know and then when things don't go so well it's hard for us to kind of cling to god and and um have that same kind of faith you know what i mean we we definitely want to challenge him and say what's going on yeah. <laughs> um so can I, can I share one other story quickly okay. so when i first did it like one of my mentors he said to me oh yeah i've got this guy from america he wants you to do this this illustration the senior work and he really likes it so i'm like oh that's good isn't it so i traveled down to angel meet the guy in like some hotel and he's telling me about the idea 
So these times I've just converted to Christianity and then the guy's telling me how he wants me to do some lottery advertisement. Mm. And I'm like, oh, these drawings are like, he just wanted me to draw a family. That's all he wanted me to do, just draw different families. And like I said, I can do this. I was like, well, why does it have to be lottery? Yeah. <laughs> so I actually, I was praying to God and I was like, yeah, I, I, I think I don't think I'm able to do this job, is it? That's what yeah. I said to God. And I actually had to sacrifice it and say, no, I'm not doing it. Mm. Oh wow! That's the right or wrong decision. I feel it was the right decision, yeah. but it it was like wow. That actually brings me on to my next question about being um having like your your own morals and your own sp- um spiritual like stance within business. Because obviously, some people believe that to succeed with it, within a business or um, being self employed, you have to be kind of cutthroat. You have to like you know just you have to kind of like accept anything coming your way. You can't, you can't um, like reject any opportunities. If you do reject opportunities, you're a fool and things like that. So like, how do you, how do you, obviously Lee touched on it just now, but how do you kind of um, remain or have your Christian kind of beliefs within such a massive business like context where there's so much things thrown at you? How do you, how do you keep that Christian, your Christian values and morals? I'll start with you, Alec, because Lee, Lee kind of just touched a bit. But. Um, or, is it, or, is, or is it even a challenge for you? Is it not a challenge? It's not a great challenge. I mean, I think just the, just the, just the, the fundamental things like, you know, I don't work on Sabbaths and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, 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 not, that's not a problem for me because I, 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 can, I can arrange that around my time. Anyway, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the boss at the end of the day. So it's mm-hmm. not really a challenge in, in that sense. Um, but in the fitness industry, the challenge um, to kind of stay moral is that you don't want to you don't want to give people false um, kind of like, like there's a lot of there's a lot of things in the fitness industry that oh you, if you do this in six weeks you can get this if you do this in twelve mm-hmm. weeks you can get that and I'm like don't work like that like, I mean so <laughs> I'm 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 more of a I'm not I'm not gonna push those kind of messages mm-hmm. uh, of the quick the quick fix because I know I know from personal experience from training myself for, for years and, and like for training people for, for a certain amount of time that yeah. it doesn't it doesn't that doesn't happen in, in that length of time so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you that that's gonna happen in, and it doesn't happen and then I'm I'm kind of like some kind of um liar at the end of the day so mm. I'm very I'm very I'm very um straightforward with my clients and say listen this is a long-term lifetime thing um you don't have to stay with me for life, obviously. If you feel that you you've, you've reached a certain point that you want to leave, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna allow you. That's fine, no problem. But I'm not gonna give you a time period where yeah. I think that you can you can get a certain um, physique or, or or body type or whatever. Because at the end of the day, that's not truthful. Because I know I know from experience again that it doesn't take that. This it takes much more than that. It takes a little whole lifestyle change, not just yeah. a few weeks or a few months. So I. In terms of that, that's that's kind of like um, my biggest um, challenge, I would say, morally in the fitness industry, that you don't want to be um, giving people false hope and false dreams, because that's yeah. just not that's just not cool. So yeah, that's that's one of the, one of the things that I struggle. I've been definitely in the fitness in the fitness industry. Like everyone wants to know that you know, after six weeks, you're gonna get oh, abs. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, no. I'm not gonna tell them. I'm not gonna lie. I'm still gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and sometimes it means that you may not get as much clients as you. As you yeah, as I was gonna you, say that as well. Mm. But I'm cool with that because I'm not gonna lie to you and say say certain things, but I know I know it's not true. You know, so that's fine. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a, a lot of the like moral kind of decisions you have to make. In my to an outsider, it might look like you're turning money away or customers away or clients mm. away, but I think it's very it's really important to like stick to your morals and like you know your spiritual your um christian values um and another question is so since you've started as a freelancer how mm-hmm. have you changed um personally <sighs> like your characteristics <laughs> things like that um i don't know if i have i don't i don't know if i've changed that much to be to be honest um you probably have to ask my wife that question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think I'm more or less the same same person. Yeah. To be fair. No, I, I don't think I've changed that much. Okay. 
Um, what about you, Lee? Ha um, have you changed or how, how have you changed um, since you've become a freelance or, or self-employed? I, I think I'm like more confident in the business side of it um, mm -hmm. and doing it on my terms. A lot of things like you can, if you're approaching a business, sometimes depending on your character type, you can approach it that the business is bigger than you. And like people mm -hmm. are giving you stuff and that like, you have to be needy and like, oh yeah, that's the job I have to jump for it. Yeah. Once you know what, like, you can be picky if you want to be picky. I think that's a good thing to be picky as well, because then yeah. you establish mm -hmm. who you are actually. And um, also, like when you make mistakes or things don't go well, you kind of use it as a learning experience. If you're mm -hmm. kind of too high strung on it at the beginning and you're expecting everything just to work out, especially when you've like you've dedicated it to God, you prayed about it and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Those things are not healthy in the sense of it's normal. Don't don't get me wrong. Everyone will probably do that when like they're at a certain age, but yeah. it's not healthy to think that nothing will fail and that you can't learn from what fails. Yeah. Mm. So in that sense, like the pricing was the hardest thing at the beginning. Cause if you look at pricing and you look for other people for help, like I remember my mom had um, a friend and he was a graphic designer and I had a big meeting with him just to find out stuff. This guy worked for big companies and everything. I'm just a little guy. Like I was like 16 at the time, mm. just doing my own drawings. Is is offering people like thousands because he's working for big companies to do jobs. And then I'm thinking that if I'm, if someone comes to me and asks me to draw something and I'm going to offer them a thousand pounds, I'm like, they're not going to take me realistically. <laughs> <laughs> like me and what army, me and what company, you know? <laughs> but when you like build up how you want to do it and work to understand what business is, you're working to your clients. Like when I was at art college, the best thing that I learned was that I had tutors that hated my work, but it's not because my work was rubbish because other tutors loved it. You have to work to a client. Yeah. Like if you're in business, certain things, I'm not saying sell your soul or anything like that. I'm just saying that certain things are like, it's neither here nor there, but you're not working for you. You don't have to love off your work. You just have to make sure your, car, your, your client loves it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's ideas that I've seen clients do and I'm like, that's a dumb idea, but I don't say that to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I just like, all right, this is what you want to do. I might show it in different light to say to them, are you sure? But at the end of the day, if that's what they're happy with, that's what they're happy with. Yeah. And I it's mean, about definitely, it's about, it's about valuing yourself as well, isn't it? It's like knowing your value and knowing that um, it's if, like, like what Lee said, some of his tutors didn't like his work, um, but there's always a target market for your product or your service that you're providing. Yeah. So people that don't want to pay for it, they're not your target market at the end of the day. And it's right. about knowing your worth, pricing yourself um, according to obviously your worth. Um, and I came across this um, quote today and it said, people aren't afraid to start their dreams. They're embarrassed to see in starting small. So like when you started small or st just started your business, were you, as, as Lee said, he grown, he's grown to become more confident, but ha were you a bit like, uh, I don't know, you know, people are not going to take me seriously. Um, I don't know if yeah. I'm qualified enough or, yeah. you know, Im imposter syndrome, kind of like, oh, I'm not good enough. Did any of you feel that way? And how did you overcome that feeling? Um, yeah, you do feel you feel you do feel underqualified. Um, I did, I did, if, I did actually feel very much underqualified um, when I first started, just being on the gym floor and just like trying to get clients and stuff like that. But then, um, was it one of the other one of the other personal trainers that was on that worked in the same gym with me? He said to me, he said something very very. Um, very eye-opening and crucial is that you you may feel unqualified but the people that are coming to you are even less qualified than you are so mm. you know just you, you almost have to kind of like um just display your knowledge and also just be honest you know just listen I, if, if there's something that you don't know listen i'm not quite sure can i get back to you in that um mm. and, I, and approach it that way but if you go and if you go into it like you're you're Mr. Norway Gold from the beginning, then that's where you're gonna find problems because if you give people wrong information, um, you, that's gonna be problematic in the future. But yeah, so yeah, I did feel kind of um, kind of like inferior in a, in a sense in the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah, but just yeah, what that what that personal training said to me was very um, it was very encouraging, and I, I just approached it in that way. Uh, actually, the clients that are coming to you are even less qualified than you are, so just display your knowledge to them in the best way that you can. 
and, and continue to learn as you go along. You know, so yeah. Definitely, yeah. So, um, what about you, Lee? Did you feel kind of like underqualified or, you know, kind of like imposter syndrome, a bit insecure about your business? Um, it, it, it's it's two sided. So at one point, sometimes I I could believe in my skill, and I'm like, yeah, I'm really good at my skill. Mm-hmm. And then on the other side, I'm like, yeah, but I'm not good at marketing. Mm. And I feel that like I feel small in the marketing side of it so i remember someone sent me to um what's it called a networking event and i hate networking events but <laughs> it's useful, i think but I, I hate them so yeah. i was there, like very nervous and all sorts and then i just said all right like lee just sell yourself like imagine you believe in it yeah so someone was talking to me and they're like oh yeah so can you do- yeah of course i can do i, I can do anything i'm just talking like that but i really believe that i could but I didn't believe I could handle the business side of it. I like, let me make my skill kind of talk and override. Mm. But it worked in the sense, but then I realized that the business side of it, I weren't really taking it business serious because I never had that business mind. Mm. And the confidence got me into realizing my flaw as well. And then when I saw my flaw that I weren't business mind, I was like, oh, so yeah, I could talk that I know what I'm doing, but I don't know what I'm doing on the business side and I need to get that up. Maybe not yeah. the same level, but I need to get up to uh, operational level. Yeah. Well, so what did you practically do um, to enhance your knowledge about marketing or on the business side of um, your business? Your business. So with Minecraft, I find that there's a lot of people that do it. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people have different takes. It's a very kind of egotistical kind of um, environment. So a lot of graphic designers will make you feel dumb because like, oh, you don't know about different file types and you don't know uh, where to print this and you don't know about pricing. Like they'll keep their pricing cryptic and make you feel like when you say that the price is too low, so, mm-hmm. no, too high, sorry, that it's just extortionate and that you should know that this price is worth it because of what you put into it. I, I've, I saw a lot of people do things and I was like, all right, so that's what they're doing, but I know how people are responding. Let me see how I can kind of balance this a bit more. Mm-hmm. And then I also just put myself into situations. If, if you don't try, if you don't think you're good at something, but you don't try, what's the point? You're always going to be as rubbish as you were if you don't try. So yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm rubbish, but I'm going to get better by trying. So I'd have clients and I'd like, I talk through the, the work, I show them the examples and they're loving it. And then I know myself, I'm burning up. I'm like, yeah, now it comes to the pricing part. Oh, how am I going to handle this? <laughs> <laughs> but then as it went along, I started to learn different parts. I'm like, oh, so... If I ask them something this way, it can work. If I do it this way, it can work. And you just try different things and you see what mm-hmm. works and you're like, all right, that works. I'm going to do that this time. Okay. Alec, what about you? Did you do anything particular um, to like enhance your knowledge of a certain part of your business? Um, well, in terms of the personal training itself, yeah, I'm always, I'm always reading and learning, trying to learn about the body, mm-hmm. how the body works and stuff like that. In terms of marketing as well, yeah, I'm kind of like really, what he's talking about. In terms, of, I wasn't, I wasn't really good at marketing and stuff like that. So what I, what I did to kind of help with that was just, just, just to observe people on the gym floor and kind of like um, mm. see where, where I could um, help people in that regard. So if I see someone, someone doing something that's not um, probably wrong, um, I would like make a video or do something in, in regards to that. And post mm. on social media and stuff like that. So, um, so I'm I'm trying to approach it in a in an educational way rather than just um, yeah, just them. Them. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, I just try to be an educator in terms of um, helping people on the gym floor and stuff like that. So then that will kind of put interest in like um, they might want to come and ask about personal training with me and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, yeah, but it's, I'm always trying to, to learn about um, the industry and the craft and, and reading articles and reading books and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I think there's two good points there. So, like, from Lee, you can see that, like, he done more, like, trial and error. So he's just saying, if you're not good at something, try it. Um, that's the only way you could get better. Um, and from Alec, um, more about like reading, increasing your knowledge and observing. I think that's a really good point as well. Observing and seeing what people are lacking or mm. what skills they're lacking 
um, what knowledge your, your customers are lacking or even just what need can you provide for them yeah. and just going after that need basically. Um, I think that's a really good point. So the last two questions is one, what advice would you give someone trying to start um, to, to go freelance? And um, I want you to end off with like a, a kind of like a motto or a scripture that keeps you going as a business person and also throughout your personal life. So one, what advice would you give? And then a two, what scripture or motto do you kind of keep in your head to keep you going? Um, I, I'll go then. Um, so the advice I would give is basically just try. If, if you have an idea that you think would be good and that you'd enjoy, just try it out. Don't put it off. Um, like me measure, measure how you do it though, in the sense mm -hmm. of, you might have the grandest idea that, oh, I want to have the big cake shop or something like that. Yeah. Don't try to buy the cake shop first. Start mm. making cakes and then build up from there. So mm. I'm not saying that you have to start small, but start at your level. Um, and put in the quality that you, that, you, um, that you can. You don't always have the quality that you want to be, but put in the quality that you can and give a good service. So for me, a lot of times, I'm underpriced jobs or things like that. And the joke is that sometimes they're underpriced jobs and I didn't even realize I underpriced it. And because the people were so happy with the work that I gave them, they paid me what they thought it was worth. Mm. Mm. <laughs> if you do your genuine work mm. and you, you provide a good service, which goes with the, the text with, um, I think it's in Timothy. I, I, I forgot to prepare a text actually, but the text it's all right. Is, it's saying like, do service as unto God. Not just mm -hmm. to, it's, it's just to be genuine. I'm not trying to pull the wool over no one's eyes. I'm not trying to swindle you out of nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm here to help you as long as you're here to help me. If you're carrying on Buki, then then I'm gonna do you differently in it, like keep you at a distance. But if you're genuine, I'm gonna be genuine with you as well. Thank you for that. And Alec? Um I would say, yeah, just Start wherever you start where you are. With as we've said, um, just if you find if wherever skill it is, try to uh, make sure you're you're constantly honing that skill in the beginning, and then mm -hmm. also to step out and make take little steps to go to see if it's market market marketable, and if it's marketable, then go for it. I think. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, it's, it's it, again. It also takes that leap of faith as well. If you need to really kind of just step out of your comfort zone. And really just go for wherever you, wherever you feel that you, you need to go for. Because at the end of the day, God will make a way for it for you. If you, if you really put your effort into it, he really um, make that way for you, I think. Yeah. Um, and the scripture, um, what keeps me going, um, just Matthew 6, you know, the whole um, discourse which Jesus was saying about, um, said, um, you know, I, I know that you have need of all these things, so seek your first kingdom of God. And and I'll add everything onto you. So yeah, just to, that kind of keeps me comforted to know that actually I'm going to be okay. Um, wherever wherever I need, God is going to provide. Um, so you can you can kind of rest assured in, in in that fact as well. Yeah. So that's what I kind of lean on. Thank you, guys. I think that's a really good scripture to end it on as well. The fact that, especially during this time of uncertainty, with the whole um, COVID nineteen thing, and with biz being a business or a freelancer, it's obviously quite difficult to keep mm. operating during these times and yep. it's reassuring when you're reading the bible or reading scriptures such as that to know that god has you it doesn't matter what season it is it doesn't matter if it's slow right now god is still yeah. will make a way Definitely. thank you guys for joining us thank, <laughs> thank you thank you um and just before we kind of um go we're gonna if you guys will join me just saying a prayer but just like one sentence each and just for anyone who's thinking of like starting a business or just anyone who needs more clarity um, to know what avenue they should go into. Yep, so I'll start and we'll just do Alec and then Lee, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to, um, to um, join together on this app. Lord, I ask that you, wh whatever we've discussed today that may, may be of help to someone, whatever point they're at in starting a business or thinking about starting a business. Lord, I want to pray for those who are thinking about jumping out leaving out in faith or that you will um just let them know that they that you have their back and that you will definitely provide for their needs 
And Lord, I, I pray that you can just guide us all into our calling and that we will commit ourselves to you as a living sacrifice, that we'll be able to be of service and blessings to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Have a good Thank day. You. Hope Bye. it helps. Bye. 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 Bye.